Q-Music. We're all about class when it comes to pens, and we like to let it show. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio, presented by FBGeeks.com. And now for your Fountain Pen Enthusiast hosts, here's Eric and Dan. Gentlemen. This is Fountain Pen Geeks podcast, episode number 35 for Tuesday, July 31st, 2012. We are recording live on Sunday, July 29th. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio from Southern California. This is Eric. And this is Dan. Where are you from, Dan? Iowa. Iowa. And who we got with us tonight? Mr. Brian, Brian Gray. Brian Gray, how are you? Very good. I wasn't distracted. Andrew was just going to bed, and I was waving, you know, good night. So he's on his way up so to bed all, right now. Sorry about that. We all get to wish Andrew a very good night. And, and where are you from this evening, Mr. Gray? Ohio. Ohio, Iowa, and California. And we're all having a great day, right? Uh, so f- the weather in Ohio yeah. is amazing. We cooked out today. It's just nice and cool, low 70s. We haven't had weather like this that was just perfect for quite a while, actually. Uh, Why would you cook out? Just, you know, out of curiosity. Um, uh, we tried, instead of bratwurst sausages, we got these bratwurst patties and made, like, bratwurst burgers, and they were very good. Bratwurst burgers. Mm. And, uh, yep, they were uh, great. In the green room prior to the show, we all sat around and watched Dan eat his dinner. Looked like a pasta. <laughs> It was it was really good. It was uh, we went to Olive Garden last night and had leftovers, so uh, oh, I it was like fabulous. Leftovers. Who's in the audience that we have to say hello to, Mr. Smith? You're watching the audience, aren't you? Oh, we've got Brian and Lisa Anderson. The Andersons are with us. Hello, Andersons. Wasn't Brian with us last week? Yeah, yeah. He was. Yeah, he was so on the show. He's here because we're going to talk about him tonight. Who else we got? Oh, good. Uh, Rocky's I think I owe in you there, guys. Because weren't you talking smack about we me? We plan last to do that week? tonight too. <laughs> Did you say Rocky's there? Yep, Rocky's, Rocky's in supposed there. Supposed to be at the university. What's he doing in our chat? Uh, he's causing all okay. kinds of problems. <laughs> well, nice to say hello to everybody, and and please say hello back so we'll just you know continue the conversation. What are we going to talk about first, Mister Smith? Um, how about I pen think shows? Would be a great thing to talk about first. The 21st annual DC Super Show is coming up August 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Um, huge show. I mean, massive. If you could only make it to one pin show, I think this is probably the one to make it to. I don't know to. how those dates got on there, but they're wrong. Yeah, it's they 9, are. 9, 10, 11, 12. Just subtract one. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> if you show um, up on the 8th, well, I'll be there on the 8th. So the the ink they'll have a whole bunch of ink testing tables and it'll be open on Thursday and it stays open 24/7 until the end of the show on and Sunday. And let's talk about that just for just oh. one second because I I asked Brian Anderson last week about that table and now we have Brian Gray with us who's also mm-hmm. been to the DC Pen show. Brian Now neither of you have been that there, is correct? correct. So correct. this will be Eric's first wanna, one and I'm yep. sorry to hear it Dan but you can't make it this year. I know. I'm not going to teach sure you that. Yeah, no, um, I'm definitely starting a little savings fund right now to make sure I make it to that show, which Very next cool. year, which which means I probably won't make it to L.A. or Chicago. Just I, I don't think we're going to let you go to L.A. or Chicago if it means you won't go to D.C. So All right. we'll keep you to that. But I want to know about this ink testing table station zone area, Mr. Gray. Yes. It's open 24 hours a day. Yep. I, I'm actually kind of surprised. This is just my opinion. I'm kind of surprised that it's lasted as long as it has because I, I, I can't imagine how there hasn't been some kind of crazy accident where five <laughs> bottles spill and ruin the hotel carpet or the hotel floor. But it truly is amazing. You've got probably four or five convention-sized tables, you know, like three by six, two by six, and these are filled with ink. Every ink manufacturer will generally send their inks you know, they'll, they'll get a, a full sample, and you're there to do whatever you want with those inks the whole time. Um, you'll play with them as much as you want. Uh, do anything that you want to. If it's 3 a.m. and you're walking out of the bar uh, <laughs> drunk as, as a skunk, you can still play with the ink sample. Well, I just can't wait to see that. I just can't wait. Yeah. To, I don't know why, but it, it's, it has piqued my curiosity, and I want to sit there and play. What else can I, can I do at the DC Pen Show, Mr. Smith? Well, Saturday is the first public day. Only costs seven bucks to get in, and from or at nine o'clock and at one p.m. there will be a calligraphy workshop by Maria Wayro, and sounds fun to me. I mean, if I was there, I'd probably take one of them at least. Then let's see, Eric. Does that something that interests you at all? Uh, a calligraphy workshop. A calligraphy would workshop would interest me, except it's on Saturday from nine to one, which oh, it actually is from nine to one. 
I thought it, I thought that there no, was no, two. I, I think it's sessions. nine to one, which is great if you oh. really want a calligraphy workshop. But those are yeah. like the prime hours for this show. I understand that Saturday is the big day at this show, uh, so I have to be on the floor. You're right. Yeah, I, I thought it was two different sessions, one at nine and one at one o'clock. Okay. Um, but if, if you don't want to do that, at 2 o'clock, the Pin Collectors of America will be having their Pins for Kids workshop. At 4 o'clock, the Baltimore, Washington, Richmond area will have their Pin Club meeting. And a few other things I noticed at their website is Private Reserve will be giving away 700 15 milliliter bottles of their Invincible Black Ink. 700? What is uh, that? Wow. One, oh, one to each of the first 700 people in the door, maybe? Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then Stipula will also be giving away a bottle of their uh, Kalamo ink to the first 200 attendees on Saturday and Sunday. Wow. What if wow. you get there oh, Thursday? You're gonna- <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, Sunday is the, the second public day, the last day of the show. Um, only seven bucks to get in. Heck of a good deal. Definitely go to their website, pencentral.com, for more information. PennCentral.com is the website for the DC Pen Show? Correct. Cool. I, I guess I never knew that. Yeah. I usually... <laughs> as, someone, as someone that attends and enjoys almost all the pen shows, you know, I, I usually don't go to Miami. I usually don't go to Raleigh. But the other ones, generally, I'm always at, this is the one. This is the one to be to. You know, I mean, L.A. is huge, wonderful, and great. Um, shows like Baltimore is pretty good. Columbus is really good. Chicago is really good. This is the king of all shows. I mean, you just, it's, it's like, you know, I, Dan, I think you, you summarized it well. If you have to sacrifice, my opinion, your finances on LA and Chicago to go to this one, do it. I would recommend it. It's a tremendous pen show. Probably, I think easily to say probably the best in the world, honestly. But I haven't been to international shows yet, but that's what I've heard. Okay, so are you going to compare it? Uh, to LA, larger than LA, yes, larger, uh, more uh, larger, larger, and well, it's all they're they're different, you know, because um, with LA, the public is not allowed in till Sunday. until Sunday. You know, it's all weekend passers, and then Sunday is nuts. You know, Sunday at L.A., there's a line going out the door. D.C. is basically nuts all the time, you know? I mean, it's it's just, I don't know that they could possibly do just a Sunday public day because it would just be insane. So you're saying um, Saturday and Sunday at D.C. is basically like that rush on Sunday at L.A., but that's both days yes. in D.C. Well, this is going to be fun. Dan? But imagine even imagine even more attendees and even more... Um, oh. uh, uh, distri- uh, distributors. What am I saying? Uh, uh, what? Vendors. <laughs> vendors. Vendors. Thank is you. The word vendors. Looking for. Yeah. Um, well, I can't wait. And that is, you know, two weeks from right now, it'll all be over. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, but I'll be there. Dan, you're still not going. You just put that in perspective. I, I, I really kind of, you know, every week I try to get Dan to go. You know, I, I, everywhere I go. I look for a bag that 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 looks like it's just (laughs) stuffed with money. And if I find it, I promise you I will be there. Okay. I'll hold you to that. We're going to talk about... By the way, before before we change topics, I want to address something fast. The last show that I was on like three, four weeks ago, I went and watched the replay. And then I had no idea. I stepped on you guys like five times. And you're trying to talk. And I stepped all over you. And I promise it was my connection. I'm not a rude that person. Was, so I just want oh, to. Everyone knows you're a jerk. It's okay. <laughs> that was the night you weren't so, at home. You were at. That was when I was at my parents. Or I'm sorry, yeah. my, my, my right. in-laws. And maybe my connection was slow there. But if I step on you guys, please let me know. Because I was watching that broadcast. And I just kept spouting and spouting and spouting and spouting. <laughs> and you guys were just like, okay. okay. We're whatever. going to ignore him from now on. <laughs> but no, this week, this week we're, we've been waiting for you to come back so we could, you know, do this poll question. I, oh, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. This, this all came up. This poll question for, uh, that's currently at the site came up specifically because of your most recent, what are we going to call it, an offering? A limited edition, I think, right? L- limited edition. Limited edition. Yep. Let, me, let, me, let me get my boxing gloves on first. Okay? No, I, uh, <laughs> you announced it uh, via video. I saw the video. Correct. Uh, yep. I had actually seen pictures of the pen before the video. Thank you very much. Uh, and yep. you said that some people were calling it or saying that it could be a stealth pen, and some people were saying, well, not so much. Uh, wasn't completely all black. Uh, and I took that opinion. It, to me, it wasn't stealth, and I told you that right up front. You know, 
And I wasn't rude about it. Yeah. I said, you know, to me, it just doesn't really qualify. And I think Dan said it did qualify. Am I right, Dan? I used it in the headline. Um, l- looking back at it, I I would give it at least a semi-stealth rating. Right, and that's rating. what Brian um, called it in the video. He said he wasn't going to, he was just going <laughs> to call it a semi-stealth. Didn't matter in the end. They all sold within 24 hours, and and, and that was great. But I that did bring up, because I, I only figure, I don't know where I acquired my definition for a stealth pen. Uh, but to me, it was an all-black pen. So we decided to make it a poll question. And the question was, how black must a pen be before you consider it stealth? Last time I looked, there were 275 votes that had been cast. 61% of those votes said that everything must be black. And that's the cap, the barrel, the clip, and the nib. So, Wow, there are a lot of wrong people out there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's, that, that was not my answer. My answer was the next one. 25% of the people said everything but the nib must be black. And that's what I put. Uh, because otherwise I'd be, uh, I'd be uh, ruling out a pen that I like that I can't think of right at the moment. And the, one, the only one that's all black that I can think of off the top of my head is the, is the Invincia. Right, the well, Monteverde. The, the, vanish, the Vanishing Point has a rhodium nib, right? No, it's... Uh, is it all black? black? It's, it's not rhodium. black. It's either yellow gold or white gold. Okay. Oh, it's gold? So, Pla- well, platinum plated. Well, so it's like I would definitely gold, call... But... I would definitely call the vanishing point a stealth, and it doesn't have a black nib. Right, and so that's, so that's, I that's where I also voted mine. everything but the nib. Yeah, that's where I everything but the nib. But, and and I know that that contradicts. Well, keep in mind, I didn't publicize it as a stealth pen. No, you just um, got us all I, thinking I, I was, about was, it, didn't you? I, I, <laughs> well, here's what happened. I um I said something on the Fountain Pen Network and maybe my blog like about two or three weeks before that pen was really ready, and I said, "Get ready for a new stealth offering from Edison." And then I thought, oh, shoot, maybe I shouldn't have said that because is this really stealth? And then when the pen came together, I emailed some people that I trust, like, hey, do you consider and this you, to be by, stealth? By, and, people, and by then, people that you trust, you mean me and Dan. I did email <laughs> you guys photos. Yeah, yeah. There, was, there were oh, others, were there? though. There I, I other, didn't know there were other people that you trust. trust. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so then I thought to myself, well, you know what? Maybe I'll call it a stealth pen and I'll make this huge controversy and everybody will talk about it. But, eh. I'm not a big fan of that type of marketing, quite honestly. So, honestly, I was a, I was a little wishy-washy, and I said, it's a semi-stealth pen. You guys can decide. Everybody can have their own vote as to whether it's a stealth pen. I think it's stealthy, but well, I, think I it's do sold. agree. Well, <laughs> I call it, it's I call gone, it stealth so. in the clouds. <laughs> it's stealth that, that's, that's gone. But I honestly, now that you guys are, are we're discussing this, I lean a little bit more towards Eric's opinion than Dan's opinion. Um, I think that the whole idea of a stealth pen originated from the aircraft bombers and fighters. And so, you know, those are all black. Those are actually satin finish. So you could even right. argue that a gloss True. finish is not a good idea on a stealth True. pen. So, But then again, there are no rules to this. Fountain pen people have just coined the term on their own. I don't think that any – I'm not sure. Is there a company that really markets them as, like, this is the stealth pen? That's the a good question. Inventia Stealth. Inventia does say stealth. Yeah. It's, okay. it's in the title of their pen. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But, I mean, normally I, I think the pen should be all black with ruthenium plated clip and nib. If it has mm-hmm. a normal size traditional nib that's not either black or ruthenium plated, I wouldn't call that stealth. Okay, so the, the but black... I, I, but I do, the, I do consider the vanishing point okay. stealth because the nib is so tiny. Right, so the, the, the matte black vanishing point that's currently on the market... Uh, is stealth yeah. in your eyes. And that's the one I thought of when I answered this question because everything but the right. nib is black. Right. Well, Other had I... That, sorry. Oh. Ha- had I marketed my pen in that direction as stealth, you guys realize that only 4% of people that mm-hmm. were polled would have agreed with me. So <laughs> <laughs> I would have probably had quite the uh, turd storm, if well, you I'm will. Not sure uh, that, I'm not sure uh, the pen sold quickly because it was semi-stealth. I think it's because it's I understand. a darn nice pen. And it, yeah, right. I, I'm, You know what? I, I'm not relating this to sales. I think it's just anecdotal. It's a good conversation. What does denote stealth? Yeah. Speaking of stealth, yeah. should we take a look at another stealth pen? Absolutely. <laughs> And, and which one would this be? Because I'm a little confused. Uh, that Omas Arte Italiana. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful pen. Um, this is from the new Omas Arte Italiana Art Deco collection. Uh, it's 
got that Art Deco design from the 1930s, and there's two versions, both based on the Paragon. There's the Certified Edition and the Limited Edition. The Certified Edition, it will have two rings and the Greek fret on the cap. Uh, there will be a wheel on the clip, a feature I really like, and it will come in three different colors. There's black, yellow, or red resin. It will have palladium plated trim, and the nib has been specifically designed for this pen based on the OMOS OM81 nib. Um, we, we do have high res pictures available, so you can check it out on our website. Um, this will be available in a piston filled fountain pen, a rollerball, and a ballpoint at an MSRP of 435, 350, and 295, respectively. The limited edition, which is shown on the screen here, will only be available as a piston filled fountain pen and it'll come in a pearl gray cotton resin and guilloche engraving. It will have the Greek fret on both the cap and the section with an onyx wheel on the clip. I think that's a really nice detail. Um, let's see the, the Ferenz yellow gold trim. It'll have an 18 K gold nib in extra fine, fine, medium or broad. And the limited edition will be available. Let's see. In October, let's see, the price on that is $875. Oh, and the number of pieces, 1,931 pieces commemorating the year 1931 when Omas created the first Arte Italiana. Wow, that was a story and a half. Yeah, there's a lot there. <laughs> do you like this pen, Mr. Smith? I do. I love uh, it. I can I like tell the way the, you're talking the, about it. I like the certified edition all black, and then I really like the limited edition cotton resin. And you know, the prices aren't too out of this oh, world. The, the certified, uh, certified. Is this a new marketing term? The certified I semi guess. stealth pad that they're offering here is a pretty good price. <laughs> Yeah, I, now, I, wait, was my Glenmont certified or not certified? That's no, what but I the manufacturer know. was certified, or is it at least certifiable? It's certifiable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't care uh, for this pet. Does not. Does not really? ring my bell. I am so glad because there's so many out there that I have to have to buy. Uh, this one is not going to take any of my money, but it is beautiful. Uh, but I was never, I, I was never is... a fan of the Paragon. Go ahead, Mr. Gray. I think this is outstanding. I love this pen. Um, you know what I really like about this that is very unique, and I have not seen in I I, th I don't remember seeing this before. Notice at least on the is this the certified edition that has the the twelve sided facets and the guilloche pattern. On that one, notice that there's these bands that are just below the barrel threads, and those bands are concealed when the cap is on, if I'm looking at this correctly. Yeah. Um, do you, I mean, that's unique. That's something special that I haven't really seen before. I don't, I don't remember that being, you know, um, a part of a pen design. I, I like that. I think the shape is great. I like how the roller mechanism on the clip is a matching black. That's an interesting touch. Um, you know, Omos makes great pens, period, and it's a piston so filler. In other words, facets, you can't go wrong with you facets. You like the expensive version. I like the yeah. expensive version. I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn down the other ones. I don't know that I would buy them, you know, uh, myself. Um, but, yeah, I think that these are gorgeous pens overall. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. It's beautiful. Uh, and I, I also like the yeah. expensive one. But it's not something that I have to have. But, Dan, I guess you're saving your pennies, right? The... Actually, the the certified edition is very tempting because oh, price point. It's a, I mean, yeah, four ninety five MSRP. Four thirty five. Um, four four thirty even, even better. better. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah pist piston filler, Omos Paragon, large pen facets. I mean, I love everything about the Paragon. So this this is right up my alley. This this yeah. would be hard to resist. Maybe you could find those in the range of three fifty if MSRP is four thirty five. You know, and if. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't get into a rollerball or a ballpoint, but the fountain pen, maybe, maybe that would be in the range of 350 depending Good. on who's selling it. We'll have to keep our eye out if for, for no other yeah. reason but to help Dan out. Maybe it will be at the DC Pen Show, Dan, and if it is, we'll tell you. We'll pick one up for you. We'll pick one up and take a picture. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now have, let's talk about another pen, one that uh, I can't afford. But this one I think is beautiful. The, yeah, this Nokia Cherry Blossoms in the Evening. Um, it's very subtle, and I, I love that about this pen. It's based on the portable cigar model um, made from ebonite. It makes use of the kakiwadi technique, which means kind of like drawn division. And actually, since Ernest in, is in the chat, he should correct me on this. Um, 
I was, I've been going through a, a lot of the definitions for techniques and I've just been coming up with the best I could find. Um, as far as I can tell, it's a technique in which fine lines and other details are intentionally not painted with arushi prior to sprinkling with powder. And what this does is it creates a separation between the elements, allowing the background to create the border around So them. if I understood that correctly, there's uh, parts of the pen in a design uh, that are not covered with urushi, so the powder, the maquille powder, goes directly onto the ebonite. I guess so. I, I, I think it probably, you know, whichever, the way that I interpret this, and again, I... I Usually when I do these shows with you guys, I like to be spontaneous, so I don't read what we're going to discuss first, so I'm not prepared at all. But anyways, I, 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 what I'm guessing is maybe, and I'm looking for a response from Ernest before I, I'm not going to speak as an authority, there's probably parts of the pen that are wet with sticky Yurushi, and then the gold powder is applied to those areas. When the gold powder hits the areas that are not sticky and that are cured, it won't, it won't it won't stick anyways, if that makes any sense. And Ernest just said, ahem, so I'll, I'll wait until he says something <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> Ernest, help me out here, buddy. Um, uh, anyway, we can talk about how beautiful the thing is, even if we don't know well, how it's, it's made. If, if you want it, I mean, head over to Nakia.org and place your order. It's only $2,900, very affordable, you know, pocket change for most of us, <laughs> I wish. But uh, well, I, it's... I think, I think I'm vindicated. Ernest just said that wasn't a you're incorrect, ahem. I'm trying to pick my <laughs> words. So maybe I was on the right track. But I'm sure he'll let us know. This comes up. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to spend $2,900 on a cartridge converter pen. I'm sorry. I won't do it. Oh, I'm sure they silence. can make it an eyedropper for you. Yeah, I know it can be an eyedropper. <laughs> $2,900, we are a stone's throw, a toss, a stone's toss away from an Alfred Hitchcock, are we not? Yeah, you're Which, right. I mean, these cherry blossoms are beautiful. Who the hell would want one of those pens anyway? Which one? <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock. Where's his off switch? Uh, you're, you're looking at two of us. <laughs> Just boot him, Eric. I'm sick of this guy. <laughs> the cherry blossom, Nakaya, really needs to be framed and put on the wall. It's just gorgeous. It, at least, you know, the artwork on it. Yeah. If you gave me a choice between an Alfred Hitchcock and this pen, I would take this pen easily. Good for you. That's one more <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock out there in the wild for someone else to get because that's a limited edition. <laughs> Apparently these, you just call them and they'll make them for you. Okay. Are we moving on or are we waiting for an answer from, from Ernest? Um, he says we're actually correct in describing the technique. Okay, cool. Sweet. It's just a it's going to pick words. power of the internet. Um, we have... Uh, been sorely lacking in news from the next company for quite some time and then last <laughs> week we had some news and it looks like they're back on track and going to be mentioned every week for the foreseeable future what's going on at twisby they are back in full force uh mocking up new designs for the montessa range which was very surprising yeah, to me yeah i think actually. it's you know foul foul if those minis aren't out yet don't be looking at new things to tease us with <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be a proposed design for a new line that will include a ballpoint rollerball mechanical pencil and a piston filling fountain pen. Now, the fountain pen diameter is a little smaller than what we have for the 540. So, you know, think think smaller, a little bit lighter, but that'll also depend on the material because it will be offered in both plastic and metal in a range of colors, and there is talk of a matte finish option. Now, obviously, we have no clue what's actually going to result because there's no price. There's no time frame. Really, <laughs> the matter? only thing we would know. Would it matter if they gave us no, a time no, frame? It, it wouldn't. <laughs> um, we, we do know um, that it will be using a number five nib, the same as what's on the 540. And since it won't be coming out for a while, read years, <laughs> it'll probably be using the Yovo nibs. <laughs> Yeah, I'm absolutely not excited about this pen, this line, because I want the mini. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm very, very interested to see the price point for this pen, because if it's below the 540, this is probably my new recommendation for fountain pen noobs. Uh, 
Possibly. I guess I'd have to see and use the pen first and see how much cheaper it is. How, what price point are you expecting it to be? Say 40 bucks. And what's a 540 going for these days? 55 It's uh, $15 isn't that much of a difference, really. No, but it's a couple of bottles of ink and a pad of paper. Yeah. I'll have to see the pen. I'll have to see the pen. I think it looks. I think it looks pretty sharp. And Rachel is commenting about the nib. The photo that I'm looking at of this, you know, assuming prototype is definitely a Yovo number no. five. Uh, the 540 used a Yovo number no. five, but a slightly different shape than this. And my understanding is the Micarta and the Vac are both box. So the 540 actually was a Yovo, or is a Yovo nib. This one that I'm looking at is uh, a newer Yovo number no. five nib, from what I are can tell. Are these actual pens, Dan, or are these just computer generated mock ups? These are computer generated mock ups. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to say it again. I want the mini. Mini, 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 mini. But we can talk about a pen that I would really like. Shall we go there or oh. should we not go there? We could skip this one altogether. Well, it'd be doing our readers a disservice, <laughs> but I mean. However you want to treat it. It's already on the screen. Let's go for it. Yeah, the Pelican M800 and Brown Tortoise. Oh, yeah, my goodness. That's a beauty, isn't it? Rumors of this have been floating around since March. <laughs> um, and at the time, they were saying a possible September release. Um, places like Nibs.com and Pelican's UK distributor had actually posted this information. And Pelican asked them to take it down shortly thereafter. But there was um, some talk. Let's see. Oh, I don't have his name. But uh, he, he's well known in the Pelican community. He didn't know any information about this pen. So a lot of people think Pelican is probably just screwing with us. Um, we don't really know what the situation is on it. At the time when the rumors came out, they had estimated the price of around 650 for it. So that was um, before the Pelican price increase. Oh yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if this was released and it was like eight or eight fifty. Yeah, I mean, if it's released, maybe they had them take it down because they decided not to do it. Could be. I mean, it who would knows? certainly sell, but, in my opinion. Oh, it would yeah, sell it would. two right here on this show. Th this would definitely hold me over until the white tortoise came out. I like this much more than the white. I don't know if I'd say much more, but man, it's a beautiful pen. This is an M800, this right? This is an M800. Yeah. yeah. It's large. I th Personally, I think the M800 is large, for me anyways, just my, my preference. It's large. I mean... Yeah. Well, you love large pens. I like smaller pens. At least lately I have. <laughs> well, Pelican actually makes smaller pens. Perhaps we'll find some for you at the DC Pen Show. You know, one of my favorites is a 215. I broke mine a little bit ago, and I was very angry about it. How'd you break it? Just out of curiosity. I dropped it. Ooh. Dropped it on my shop floor, which is concrete, and it just split right, right on the barrel. Wow! Don't do that. Yep. Well, see, I, know, what I am picked I do? up the the white tortoise M six hundred, and mm -hmm. it, the pin is just too small for me. I mean, I uh, like six hundred is too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just too small. If it, it feels like the jump from like a four hundred to a six hundred is a lot smaller than the jump in size from a six hundred to an eight hundred. Like I, yeah. I haven't actually looked at measurements. But it, it feels that and way. I haven't it's looked at measurements either, but I would agree. Because you brought the M600 to Los Angeles. And it right. looked like a 400 to me. Yeah. Now, how do, you and, feel about the, how do you feel about the 1000, Dan? Oh, I love it. I can't wait. All if right, all right. they come out with that in either one oh, of these, I will yeah. heartbeat. The I demonstrator mean, is very nice. Yeah. <gasps> You're turning down a demonstrator? We have to move on. If, <laughs> I don't know who this person is. <laughs> Should we talk about vintage we pens? We can talk about vintage pens, but we have to be very careful because the author of this article is apparently in the audience, question mark. Well, good. He can correct us if we yeah, get it wrong. Let's get it wrong. Everything I wrote there is correct, so go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Anderson writes an article that makes us all want to add at least one overlay to our collection. And if you looked at the Sunday Shopper I put out today, there was a pretty stunning overlay. Yes. Not vintage. Since you so. brought it up. You managed to pick two things from my watch list to put on your Sunday shopper. How do you do this? <laughs> well, <laughs> what were they? The overlay and the uh, the Goldfink safety. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Um, but back to the article. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
o overlays provided interest uh, when the only material for pens was hard rubber. And uh, some of the most interesting designs came from second and third tier pen makers. And the article that Brian put together was, I mean, fantastic. I, I love it. Each time his articles come up, it's like a surprise for me. And I stop whatever I'm doing to read it. So thank you, Brian, for submitting those articles. And he supplied the photos, too, and the, the, the overlays are beautiful. And, yes, that's when I went to eBay and put some things, found some very nice things to put on my watch list. And, and I, I think I sent him a text message blaming him for that because it was his <laughs> fault. So, uh, yeah, I, we'll say thank you once again before we move on. Yes, very good article, Brian. So now we're going to talk about something. Oh, it's a full frame, so we'll be off the air, but people can look at this picture. If you have some awesome pens, you need an awesome case to store them. This is awesome. And the Venlo Carbon Fiber 20 slot pen case. Uh, it's made from maple, oak, and ash, and it has multiple layers of lacquer to create you know, the effect of depth and dimension. It's lined with a non tarnishing suede. The slots measure seven inches long by one inches wide, so it'll hold almost anything. Um, let's see, there's brass hardware, a removable tray. The footprint isn't too big, 12 inches by eight and a half by a height of three. MSRP on it, it's a little steep at 600, but if you do some searching, you can find it for 495. 495 sounds like the price of a pen. In fact, yeah, in Oma's it is. Art Deco. Yeah, it, it'd be hard to, to pick up this case instead of that yeah. pen. Yeah, but it is a beautiful case. It's smoking. It I'm, nice. I'm used to seeing their cases out of wood, am I not? They're mostly, generally, they're beautiful wood cases that are the same right. shape. Where is yep. the carbon fiber on this? It covers I, all of it. All right, so. Yeah, I, I, w I would guess that the. The case is probably wooden, but then it has a you know carbon fiber that's that's layered on top. That's my guess. I can't say that authoritatively, but that's what I'm guessing. I would guess that too because um, that's. I can't imagine it's solid carbon no, fiber. No, it says it's wood. Three different kinds of wood. Okay, um, gotcha. But gotcha. then if that's the case, a carbon fiber is not cheap. This is a good price for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's not bad, but man, could, it's could interesting you... though. Because t typically, you know, the appeal of carbon fiber is to make something super lightweight and yet still durable. I think the idea of this is just it makes a cool coating. Uh, yeah, I don't I, think it's going to – the idea is not to make a lightweight that, that pen case, That was the original right? purpose of carbon fiber. The, the purpose now yeah. is to make something uber cool. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it covers that. It covers that quite nicely. I will say this. Uh, Venlo usually attends the, ma the majority of the pen shows that I go to. I can't imagine that he wouldn't be in D.C., so maybe we'll see these live <laughs> I'm there. I'm just making a list. I'm just making a list. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, of course, I'm digging Dan it's a little bit. Not I'm sorry, truth, my either. friend. He's just saying this <laughs> to make you upset. No, no, no. Actually, the reason that I brought that up is because I'm pretty sure that a lot of times he has specials at shows, <laughs> too. So maybe I, – I, I, no, I'm being 75% honest. I'm not trying to off. dig Dan. Yeah, I'm not trying to dig oh, no, Dan. In that uh, case, so, you know, Dan and I have red phones that talk to each other. We're walkie-talkie all the time. So if I see a great <laughs> deal, I call Dan and say, you want this? He says, yeah, there it is. It's not like he won't have you know, representation. That, that actually happened in Chicago with, with the vanishing point. Yeah, yeah, we watch out for each other. Just because some of us all don't. Right. Just like to rub it in. Go ahead. Where are we going? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. i got to press a button. It's going to be three months before you guys invite me back again, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> well, where are we going? We're heading over <laughs> To a Kickstarter <laughs> project. Um, are you guys familiar with Kickstarter? I am very familiar with yes. Kickstarter. <laughs> All right, cool. This is a pen. It's called the Ilex EDC, the Everyday Carry. It's a pen designed to be your everyday carry pen. It has a capacitive tip on one end, and then it can either be a fountain pen, ballpoint, or, you know, both of them if you want, because if you support it at a certain level, you'll get both tips. Uh, it's completely made in the U.S., CNC machined, assembled, and will be um, shipped out of a uh, shipping agency in the U.S. The only thing not from the U.S. is the nib units, which are from Germany, and the capacitive tip from China. A pledge of $130 will get you just the Ilex fountain pen, and the funding goal is $75,000. There's only 14 backers with 12 days to go. Um, I don't think they're going to make their funding goal. It, it, it doesn't seem like it's it's a real... It's been 15, 16 days. They've got uh, 
pledge of $1,891, they're not going to make this goal. But we should probably yeah. explain, just in case anybody doesn't know what Kickstarter is, what is Kickstarter? It is a, a website where people can go to post a project uh, and th they have a funding goal. So like this one is $75,000. If people like it, they can pledge a certain amount and, and it's usually it's to buy that product. So $130 here is the pledge amount to get one of these pins. If the project succeeds in reaching its funding goal, then you owe them money. The product will be made. It will then ship to you. If they do not reach their goal of $75,000 and you pledged money, you won't have to pay anything. Right. The, so, the, the charge actually is not processed unless they reach their goal. Right. It's, it's a way for people who have a really good idea to get the capital but before they produce the pen. It, the capital, the money is coming directly from the people who want to right. buy It's not it. just for pens. It's for all oh, kinds no, no. of stuff. Oh my gosh, there's there's video games on there. There's people that are doing documentaries. Um, people, iPhone accessories out the wazoo. And, and it's fun uh, to just browse through them because they each each project often it has a video made by the people who want to do the project. Uh, some videos are really high quality. Some not so much. Um, but you can also see what what their goal is money wise. How many backers they have. How much. They have already been pledged, and and you know some some projects get six seven hundred times what they wanted, um, and that's just it's a good thing to see, and it's a fun thing to participate in, especially if you can get behind the project. I did not pledge in this one. I think the pen's too expensive, and yeah, give me seventy five thousand dollars, I'll start a pen company. <laughs> Brian Gray, <laughs> seventy five grand. I think they were overreaching just a little bit, and when I think of a pen. A fountain pen with a capacitive uh, tip on it of some kind. What pen am I thinking of, Mr. Smith? The uh, Monteverde. Yeah. It's a stealth, um, the real stealth, and it's 80 bucks. So I'm not sure how much attention they paid to the market if they, I, I assume they had to look at fountain pen prices, but 130 is too much for this pen, in my opinion. Well, it, you know, it's it's being machined from from solid aluminum, all the work is done in the U.S. I mean, there, there's a premium for that. So, and is it not basically a kit pen? Let me just say it. No, it's not a kit pen. I don't. The, from what I can tell, no. Well, I, I guess so. we have to define kit pen. the The body obviously is not. There's CNC machining that, but the nib and the insides. Well, it looks. To, I don't know of any kits that resemble this at all. Like, I mean, sometimes people will take the section from a kit and pop oh, no, it they're onto machining this section. Yeah, so how is this a kit? I mean, the, I, from what I can tell, they're machining everything. The clip even looks unique, like something I've never seen before. I mean, usually telltale signs of kit pens or people that are making kit pens that don't necessarily they want to look like kit pens. You'll, you'll always see a clip that you recognize, a section you recognize, a piece that you recognize. This looks co totally original to me. And it looks like there's actually some milling that has happened. So it's not just a lathe that's doing this. I'm looking at the photo. I wish the photo was better. But I think I see an etching on the barrel. I, I, I see too. maybe a, a facet. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, uh, Eric, I got to disagree with you on 130 to make this pen. That's, I mean, I, I, I think that's a reasonable price, actually. Um, and especially, um, you know, uh, aluminum is maybe not the... Well, then again, I'm not an expert on metals, so I probably shouldn't speak authoritatively on this. But, you know... Um, I guess I would prefer a metal besides aluminum, but to me, I think this is a good price on this pen. Um, you know, I, well, I know what it takes to manufacture something like this, and that's that's well, that, that, that's I a think good it's range. A, I think it's a good price for what's involved with the pen. Um, mm -hmm. The the Monteverde Invenza is a good price, but like I said, you, this is all made, assembled, and shipped from the U.S. So you're you're just automatically going to pay more for that's that. That's true. That's true. If I were making this, I'd probably price it a little higher. Yes. Honestly, yes. I, I probably would. Good, yeah. But, it, you know, it was interesting. I, I love seeing projects uh, on Kickstarter that have, you know, fountain pens involved. And I, I definitely want to help out the community. You know, maybe th this will certainly be a learning experience for this guy. So maybe he'll come back for revision two and it, it'll be even better. Oh, I, I don't think, you know, I... I sold my Monteverde Invincia, but I believe the capacitive 
tip was on the cap, was it not? It so was. So you had to post it in order to get it, like, on the pen. And this one has it on the end of the barrel. So you don't have to post, but you probably can't post either. Because if you did, you'd be covering up your little stylus thing. Or you'd have to use it uncapped. But then what do you do with the cap? Put it on the front. <laughs> put it put it on put it where it's put supposed it where to it's be. Supposed Cover to be. the nib. But what if I wanna <laughs> what if I wanna write on a piece of paper and then do something on my tablet? You always Take post? off the damn cap. <laughs> do you always? I'm okay. almost, I almost always. never post, so yeah. Yeah. I, I I go back and forth. If the pen is small, a lot of times I'll post. If the pen is good sized, I I'll, I generally don't post. Yes. Yeah, so, well, I, yeah. If the pen is so small that it has to be posted, then of course I post. But generally speaking, I don't post. Anyway, yeah, I'm glad to see people are trying uh, to make fountain pens with, via Kickstarter. I, I, yeah. I honestly, if if I'm um, Eric, I do disagree with you on price. I think this is a really cool project. I wish it was getting more support than what it is right now, and I like seeing people support U.S. you know made pens, especially you know people that are doing this from their bootstraps. So I might even get in and get on this. You know, to be honest with you, I while, think it's a pretty cool looking pen. While we're still on this topic, I do want to mention that Sean Newton, he was our first fountain pen Kickstarter project that we featured months ago. Um, mm -hmm. He just wrapped up his project. I think he ended up making like 80 some pens for his custom fountain pens for kids project. It was a huge success. He now has a website up. Um, I, I don't know what it is right now, but we'll include it in the show notes. You can actually go there and continue to contribute. You can, you can buy more pens from him. I mean, yeah. he's, he's had great success. So. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that for every custom, I, I could be wrong, someone correct me, but I think that for every custom order that Sean takes in, he also donates uh, another pen to a child or to, you a know, a, yeah, that's, a, a, a yeah, student. That, that's the idea so, behind this project. When yeah, you, when and, you, you buy know, a you pen, gotta, one goes to a student. Yeah, you got to admire that. that. That's really cool. You Absolutely. know, I, I, I know what it takes to make these by hand. Um, she, Sean is not using automated machinery. It's a hell of a lot of work to make one pen, you know, and to do that double duty every time you get an order, that, that's pretty admirable. Yeah, and the really cool thing about uh, his project was he kept you updated the entire time. I mean, every time he made a new pen, he would update the Kickstarter page, which would then in turn send an email to you with that update. So I saw every single pen that he made during the project, and I thought that was just awesome. Yeah. And let's think about this, everybody. Uh, think about what Sean is doing for students and younger crowds. Think about what the PCA is doing f with pens for kids. You know, honestly, our hobby <laughs> is kind of dependent upon people younger than us still being interested, you know. So that's good. So we kind of left you hanging on that one, didn't we? <laughs> I was just going to say, thank you for, can you please agree with me? I hope that you agree with me. You're that. going off script. You're on your own. <laughs> I don't look at the script anyways. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, about? like we didn't know that. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Waterford, shall we? Any, anyone into green? I love green. One of my favorite you colors. You like green a lot more than I do. The Waterford Kilbury Emerald Island Guilloche Fountain Pen comes in this new... Emerald green color. <laughs> um, I think it's fantastic. Uh, it has a, a really nice guilloche line pattern on it. Previously, this was available in black and blue. And I think there was even like a red version floating around somewhere. Um, it features a solid brass barrel. So there's, there's going to be quite a bit of weight to it. The, the transparent lacquer finish looks amazing in the pictures. There's a, a star pattern cut into the crown um, this is represents waterford's crystal heritage and it comes with an 18 gold plated steel nib engraved with the waterford seahorse medium nib only a little bummer there uh msrp on this pin is 155 but you can get it for 115 cool hmm. so there's a knockabout pen is it is a what's knockabout that pen. knockabout yeah, pen just take yeah. it with you goes everywhere uh, Rocky asks, what is guilloche? Um, it's a word we can guilloche. hardly pronounce, so you know, yeah. that's as far as we'll take it. Yeah, guilloche is basically an engine-turned thing, and that's difficult to actually explain. 
Uh, it's a very, very tedious, difficult process, especially if you're doing it completely mechanically. And by that, what I mean is uh, Rich Littlestone is a pen maker that does mechanical guilloche and all these amazing patterns. Go to yeah, argentblue.com. To, we'll, we'll put a link to oh, that because he has some videos I'll, that are just I fantastic. Just, I just put it up right now. Yeah, go to argentblue.com. I just put a link up and take a look. I think he's got YouTube yes. videos up there. I, I hope, hope he so. has YouTube videos on his website. Um, I think that he does. If not, then go to YouTube and search for Argent Blue, and maybe I'll find a link there. But you'll see that basically it's a mechanical um, machine that is uh, basically scratching lines. It's uh, that, that's that's not the best way to do this. But go to here. I'm going to put up a link right now that you'll be stunned because the process to do this is just amazing. There's a, I'm, I'm putting it up right now. I'm sorry, not to get way off the Waterford, but that's what guilloche is. Take a look well, at that. It's, yeah, no, it's, it's a very cool, and, it, and it's not just a certain pattern. Like, there's any kind of pattern you can dream of. It, the, the guilloche, and thank you for correcting me on the pronunciation, it's, right. it's actually a, a technique used to create the, these patterns. And, yeah, Argent Blue got some amazing, amazing designs on their pens, but uh, definitely worth checking out. Okay, here's out. a question. Uh, yes. A Waterman 52 in black chased hard rubber, is that not a form of guilloche? That's different. Because? Um, you're talking, you're, 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 are you talking about true chasing, or is it a machine that, that machined the chasing? Uh, is it, in other words, is it a vintage pen or vintage? a modern pen? That Waterman would probably, 52. Okay. If it's a vintage pen, then essentially what you've got is what's called a chasing machine. Okay. And it's yeah. a machine with these rollers that have patterns in them. And essentially the uh, pen is uh, forced through these rollers that create the pattern. And it, it does not actually cut. It just basically makes an indentation ah, okay. through there for the most cool. part. Now, my understanding, though, is that there's only one chasing machine left in the world that functions. And unfortunately... Uh, uh, that was burnt in a no. fire. Uh, it was, so um, yeah. The, the, I think I don't think there is any any um, uh, authentic chasing machines that still exist. Now, faux chasing is when you just take a mill and you do the same cuts. You know, with the with the you know sure. like a CNC mill. Um, but that's that's okay, very so different. Chasing than guilloche. is very different. That was yes, that was my question. Very different than guilloche. Okay. Yeah, and and just so you know, I'm sure that this Waterman being priced at 155, I really doubt that this is mechanical guilloche. I'm sure that this is you know automated machinery. Oh yeah. Not yeah, not not what Rich Littlestone does at Argent Blue, which blows my mind. It's just yeah. you, I mean you see his pens live and it's beautiful. just oh, my. amazing. Yeah, I, I saw talk him. about well, in yeah. L.A. He had a table right next to you, and yeah. I come around the corner and saw him, and I, I about tripped over myself. I mean, yeah. they're they're yeah. so beautiful. I mean, they're they're breathtaking. You'll you'll do a double, triple take. I mean, yeah. I stopped, I photographed him, I talked to him. I mean, super nice guy, super awesome guy. Yeah, yeah he's 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 a real good friend of mine, also. But talk about, I mean, talk about a pen that takes time. Um, uh, he, I, I have, no, I, I've got to guess he ha he might have forty to eighty hours in each pen. It, it's, it's, it's wow. crazy when mm. when you do it that way. And the machinery itself is fascinating. I mean, like literally, it's a mechanical machine with no motor. Um, but yet these things are tens of twenties of thousands of dollars because they're Swiss machines that were made a long time ago. I don't yeah. think that they make them anymore. They're these amazing pieces of machinery that are not made anymore they were made beautifully uh as long as you know whoever is working with them keeps them in good shape they're worth thousands tens oh, twenties yeah. thirty thousand dollars and they're just like the most amazing uh what should i say like a feat of human creation Eng of what you can do yeah. engineering yes yes and and you a lot of people think that you know like cnc machining is very difficult to learn and trust me it is it's not easy at all this is even a step above that. Uh, Rich has explained some things to me, and I just, I just, you know, I take a step back. And I'm like, ah, I can't do guilloche. So, no, and the best thing to do is go watch one of his videos, and you'll be stuck. You'll Please. be stuck watching all of yes. them because they are fascinating. I noticed that the chat slowed down a little bit, so maybe everybody's watching Rich's video right now. Oh yeah, they they, <laughs> they all went. Yeah, they definitely they are. For, you know, it was intermission. <laughs> you were talking so much. That's true. <laughs> well, I I could use a drink. I'll yeah. be back in a few minutes, guys. Where are we going now there, Mr. Smith? 
Should we look at Lisa? Uh, we're going Let's look at Lisa. Yeah, to our, our daily carry. Um, Lisa Miyako. Wow. Yeah, wow was I mean, right. Her pens. Really, there's nothing more I need no, to say. We wow. Can move on now. <laughs> yeah, done. Uh, but I think she's actually the first I've seen who carries ink with her pens. I mean, not the ink inside the pens, but actually separate bottles of ink. Um, am I wrong here? Uh, you mean seen ever in your life or seen as a, one of our daily well, in, carries? In our, in our feature. Yeah, that's the first, carries. first one that has admitted to carrying ink in our daily carries. Um, Actually, so, I, I think she just has a drug problem. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I the syringe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but her five I'm joking. Dailies... I, I, I know Lisa pretty well. She would take that as a joke. Nobody, please get offended by that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she has a, an excellent personality. Um, yes. The conversations were, were fun and hilarious, um, but her the the five daily pens that she she carries most of the time include three Nokia pens, a Mont Blanc 100 year historical, and then a Franklin Christoph Model 65 desk pen. And occasionally she'll bring along two 13 slot pen envelopes filled to the max. We have pictures of those. Um, and sh should I reveal? Well, the, before the you incorrect? do, let me take a guess at it. Because I okay. think it was the red one, the one you called a Neo, and I think it was Correct. really a Piccolo. It okay. was. It's, it's the star. I see, this is, this and... is actually the first one that you've done, and I didn't know which one was incorrect, so I had to guess myself. <laughs> I'm glad I got it. <laughs> but um, I, I figured it, it might be a little difficult for people because they might not be f familiar with uh, Nakaya's line and their um, Machie terms but um it, it turned out several people in the comments knew exactly what it was so i couldn't tell actually from the comments whether or not i was guessing correctly because some of the comments <laughs> were were either very subtle or they were getting it wrong i don't know but uh yeah it was and then you know she, she does have a few other pins that she took pictures of um just just want to thank her for participating in this it was a lot of fun really enjoyed those those images of all her pins i mean Beautiful, beautiful, pens. beautiful pens. I'm usually not a fan of Mont Blanc, but I love that Mont Blanc. I love that one. Huh? We could probably find you one. That is excellent. Pen show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't do it that time, Dan. Come on. <laughs> yeah. uh, where should we go now? To the to the very next pen that I'm going to purchase. Should we go there? Really? Are you? That's that's you interesting. Really? <laughs> seeing as how you sold the regular edition <laughs> of the Lamy Youthson that you had. Now it's not all the same color. This one is beautiful. Oh jeez! <laughs> All right. And well, this, this one doesn't have this, that that useless wing, ink window. This oh <laughs> wow! That's not useless on the two thousand. Inviting the oh, comments. Oh yes, it is. It's way too small. It's so small it shouldn't even be there. I'm glad they finally realized that. Please continue, Mr. Smith. <laughs> um, this is the new for 2012 uh, Lamy 2000 all stainless steel. Uh, it, it won't be replacing the current 2000 out. It'll be an addition to it. And like Eric said, there is no ink window on this. And from all the photographs that Lamy has put out, you would think that those tabs that hold the cap on are also missing. But nope, they're still there, just like on the current model. Um, MSRP is a staggering 375 Ouch. with street price of 300 Yeah, this enraged a lot of Lamy fans. Um, People just think this is priced way too high. They they think it's ridiculous. I'm going to wait until I get my hands on one to decide. But, uh, yeah, there it is. It's it's. Well, um, I will say this. The machining process of stainless steel is very difficult. I mean, they, uh, you know, as a pen maker, you have to put your um, overhead, labor, machining, everything into, into that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that I can make a stainless steel pen and get it under that price either, you know, really. Oh, okay. And so you're saying, I'm doing you're saying the material is what's making this. Uh... I would guess. Okay. I mean, well, first of all, it's new. It's cool. It's Is it limited edition? No. no it's it's just going to be a, yeah. It's new. It's cool. Maybe the price will come down. But I am going to guess that machining stainless, I mean, you can't cast stainless steel as far as I know. Uh, machining that is a huge pain in the rear, and then also it looks like they put that same type of like uh, matte finish to where it's you know it's not polished. It has that the same Lamy two thousand brushed. Yeah, yep. Yep. Um, that's also not that easy to do. So they, I, I guarantee, they have a hell of a lot more labor in this pen than the original. 
Oh yeah, I I agree. I think a lot of people aren't familiar with what's involved in the production of this, and I couldn't tell you exactly how it's produced, but I I can be sure there's a lot more involved than their regular you know Macrolon Lamy 2000. Yeah, I wonder how heavy it is though. Like if they've got if they've got heavy walls on this, this would be like if the, if the walls are pretty thick on this pen, or if it's identical to the 2000, it might be a pretty beefy pen as far as weight goes. Could be. I guess yeah. I'll find out. I guarantee it'll be. I guarantee it'll be heavier than the regular one. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? Gorgeous. Yeah, oh, I, I like beautiful. it. I li- well, have to have it. Can't I love live without it. I love Lamy two thousands, anyways. <laughs> I like the Lamy two thousand. I just wish the section or the nib hood or whatever you call it was the same as the rest of the pen. So what if it, uh, what if the original was all black? That, that would be, that would be probably even. I would like that probably even more than the stainless steel. You know, you know, one crazy thought I had about this this afternoon was buying this pen and sending it to someone to have it coated in like a, a black, you know, Carbon matte fiber? finish. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it's stainless steel. It would be super easy to plate. I mean, could you imagine an all black version of this? That'd be rather well, cool. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ariel Kulak could probably do that for us. He'll be, he'll be in DC. I'll talk to him. <laughs> oh, the the other thing I wanted to t- mention about this pen is that nobody seems to know when it's coming out. First, it was July. Then it was mid October. Now it's mid August. Hopefully, that doesn't change. But uh, it, it's just crazy that you know release dates for this have been so all over the place. Hmm. I wish we had more photos of this. But so far, what what I can tell of every pen we've discussed tonight, this might be my favorite. Oh, yes. I like this, this pen is a, my a whole hell of a lot. Of the ones we've discussed. Yeah. Tonight. Well. Yeah. Well, you, you know, this is up on Lamy's website, so you can go and, and drool to your heart's content over there. Oh, are there, are there more photos up there? Yeah, they've got all the details up. It's out. I mean, it's, awesome. it's been fully released as far as information goes. It's beautiful. Well, hopefully we'll see it at a pen show that I won't mention because <laughs> I am just think I'm making someone mad over all these cotton. I'm joking. Yeah, he's, he's good with it. I well, know, I know, I know. next pen featured on FP Geeks. I'll talk. <laughs> we got some mail. <laughs> Did we really? Oh, well, we're getting all the mail for the Franklin Christoph uh, desk pen giveaway, but I mean we got email. Oh, yeah, we, got we a, did. I thought a really good question via email. Are you going to read, read it? Okay, I'll read it. It's from Gene. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say Gene, Gene, because uh, it might be Genie, but I'm going to say Gene. And the, it was a question. Since I am new in the hobby, this question does make sense. I understand the MSRP and or list price, but I am not sure what the street price refers to. I guess I can stop there, can't I? Because that's basically the question. Yeah. A street price is yeah. what you can find it for for sale. It's, um, well, there's the MSRP, the, the manufacturer suggested retail price, and then there's usually a price that online retailers actually sell it for because they usually don't follow the MSRP price. If they're allowed not to, yeah. They try to give you a... a, a right. So um, we were just talking about the, the Lamy 2000M. It's a MSRP of 375 but I'm sure I've already seen it online coming soon. Don't the Goulets have it for three hundred? Okay. They do. So yeah. that's that's the street price. Is the three hundred? Right, and and the street price varies because um, you know some retailers will actually bend the rules and discount it even more. I mean, you know, like on that Venlo case, um, there were several retailers selling it at MSRP, six hundred bucks. I saw one who was selling it for five fifty, and then, like I said in the post, do some looking because if you really want it, you can find it for four ninety five. Right, exactly. So that's that's what I think of as street prices. What you can actually buy it for, especially if you look around. Right. Yeah. Essentially, manufacturers give a suggestion as to what they should sell it. If the manufacturer allows the retailers to price it whatever they want, then typically they go probably like twenty percent below. MSRP is typical because every, I mean obviously the retailers need to compete with each other, but at the same time they got to make money too. So um, that's basically what it means. The MSRP, if the if the retailer allows it, is what they suggest the price should be. But that usually means nothing as to what the actual price is. So street price means what you can probably find it for for real someplace. So excellent, excellent question. question. Thank you. Because we talk yeah. about that as if everybody knows what it means, and then we realize well not everybody knows what it means. What'd you get this week, Dan? I know you got something. Am I the only one that got something? Um, I have something in the mail, but it's coming from Germany, so... Okay. We'll, we'll talk yeah. about that one next week. I got... What did you get, Dan? I got 
an addition to a range of pins that I already have. It is the blue Namiki faceted vanishing point. I now have all the colors except for the stealth. Um, it's it's beautiful. I love it. I've not owned this one. I, I've owned all three other colors before and sold them off. I've bought them all back now, but I, I've never owned this one before. It's it's a it's a different blue. I, I got yeah, I got Eric. mine in Chicago because you pointed it out to me. Why didn't you buy it if you needed one? Because I didn't want to spend. Oh, that you much got a better deal, did you? Yeah, I but did. I got mine face to face. It was much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I'm in it for the hunt. Ah, well, the hunt's over now. So this, <laughs> you're right. Except, well, except the for the stealth, yes. The except stealth. for the stealth. It's a um, Okami has one. Perhaps she let it go. Yes, I know. <laughs> I remember when she emailed me that she got that, and she it's got it for a smoking deal. good deal. Oh my! It's it's such a good deal. It's one of those things that you brag about. I mean, and, and people are jealous. Like I was so mad. I, <laughs> I, I would. I wanted to. You weren't mad. Into, into. You weren't jealous. You were envious. <laughs> you were happy for her. Come on. Yes, you're right. Well, uh, you know, she she but, uh, proved that those kind of things still happen. So we have to continue the oh, hunt. Yeah. That's all that she was doing as a Absolutely. favor, actually. And th- there is one more pin that I got last week with the Omos 360 that I just have to show off. It's oh, this is the another Aurora. pin we're not supposed to be talking about. I, I'm not going to give away it's too gorgeous, much. I'm, I'm just letting people know. It's the Aurora Martorino. Oh, my gosh. That's a gorgeous material. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I that mean, now, see, I'm not a huge fan of green, but that one is very, very nice. Yeah. Is that an acrylic? They, they call it Aurora Lloyd. It's an acrylic. It's, it's their brand name. <laughs> oh, are you Aurora serious? Lloyd? Aurora Lloyd? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew her back it's in like the day. <laughs> It, it's their branding name for their celluloid, I guess. So is is there going to be a this this will be like precious resin? So is it just green plastic that they're calling Aurora Lloyd? Yes, I I don't. Yes, know. we still have to come up with a name for your acrylics. Don't don't let me forget that. Uh, mine, yeah. <laughs> yes, I, we can't I say that it? on the it's, air. <laughs> okay, we can't say it live. <laughs> but if anybody can fill in the blank, uh, fill in the blanks. He's going to go for it um, anyway. I market my acrylics as friggin' plastic. How's That's that? Clean enough. Dan, have you got the <laughs> Omos handy? Hold it up for me. I haven't seen it in a yes, week. I do. You haven't? Se- oh, that's too bad because I haven't written with it in just a few hours. Oh, but uh, it's, I mean, <sighs> it is it's fantastic. I love this pen. You know, I really hope something doesn't happen during shipping. Um, <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm these just things saying. happen all the time. You never know. It, but it would just be a terrible thing if that happened. Um, but no, really, I, I, I want to thank um, the guys at Kenro for sending these to us to review. Um, I'm going to have a blast with it. Eric, you're going to have a blast with it. I can tell you that for Did sure. Did we ever um, get confirmation on how the thing is manufactured? Or oh, Yes. Okay. Um, the, I, I contacted uh, one of the guys at Kenro, and he says the Omos 360 Vintage Turquoise is machined okay not injection molded which man blows my I mind see the machine because... they're doing that with because that's amazing work it's doing well you you know the the pin every little bit of that is polished even to perfection. the inside i mean right? yeah absolutely <laughs> even the inside i mean because if there was a spot to give it away you would see it um but but there's not i I, I don't know how they do it. I would love to see how they do this. I mean, and as an, as an engineer, I mean, it just blows Look my mind. He's grinning over here. He's not going to say anything. You don't have to, Mr. Craig. You don't have to. <laughs> I just, we need to call Italy is what we need to do. Personally, I, I don't know if I'd buy that. But as long as they say it's machined, I guess that's what we'll say. It's machined. <laughs> yep. What part of this? What part is machined? Yeah, exactly. Maybe Maybe they were just... You know, telling a half truth or something. Yeah. Anyway, what's going on in the forums? Uh, s- some good stuff, actually. Um, a really good post called uh, "Best Snags." What's yours? Oh. It's basically just a spot for people to um, kind of, yeah, brag. Exactly. Um, what pin you got? How much you got it for? Um, you know, things like that. Post pictures. Share. Share your good finds. Um, and I, I know you guys have probably got I'll some. I have to think about it. But is Okami already in there? 
<laughs> she, she should be. Uh, and there's a really good one by uh, Just Davy B. He, he he made a post before called And Then There Were Nine, where he was talking about his Pelican M620 collection. And he just started a new one called And Then There He's Were got Ten. Ten 620s? He he just picked up the San Francisco wow, edition. So if he puts them all together, he's got six thousand two hundred. An M six thousand two hundred. Go on, it was you know had to be there. Oh, you were here. Keep uh, going. But he he got pictures <laughs> of them all together in the post. I mean, fantastic thread. Excellent pictures. Um, definitely head over and check that out. These these links will be in the show notes um, when we're done. So cool. And but oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was. <laughs> I, I put this together b- b- before the show goes live, and so I don't always catch all the good stuff. So if you guys are in the forums and you say, hey, this should be mentioned on the podcast, definitely send us an email to podcast at fpgeeks.com with from the forum in the subject line. Uh, help me out a little bit. From the forum, podcast fpgeeks.com. Let's see if we can play Geek Challenge this week. I don't know what we're giving away yet, but we need a caller. I'll take caller number three. Uh, I'm going to mute myself while I do that. You guys can talk about whether or not the Omos 360 is machined. Uh, yeah, actually, Brian, you, know what I, I you know what I'll do? I'll t- I, I will take a minute to... Well, let me give my phone uh, number we, and you guys sorry, can talk about it. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, oh, sorry call now, 909-647-5056. You guys, chat. I will say, everybody, thank you so much. Um, my wife and I just sat down. We had the Edison giveaway through the FP Geeks a while ago, and everybody sent in hundreds of uh, entries. And uh, about two weeks ago, Eric shipped all of those to me so I can take a look at them. They're wonderful. They're awesome. I- I've been so busy lately. I haven't had a chance to really sit down with them until today. I am stunned, everybody. Like Everybody's artwork is amazing. I- it just It's so humbling. It makes me feel so great. To read those, it's like, you know, sometimes I'm in my little bubble in my shop just doing my thing and the only way I communicate with people is email and and getting these handwritten notes and people did artwork, people did all kinds of amazing stuff. It's just, honestly, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's touching. It's, it's, it's very, very wonderful. So I want to thank everybody that participated in that and uh, I'm probably going to email some people that did some really special stuff just to say thank you. So regardless, we were touched. We liked it a lot. Thank you very much. We done, Eric? Or should I keep? Uh... Well, I. What were your thoughts on uh, the machining of the Omos 360? Because you you were sitting there with a little smirk on your face, like you knew something. I really don't. I I, I don't. Um, show me the pen again. You uh, have it there, right? Well, you know what the 360 is, right? Yeah, yeah. So what's what's the controversy though? Well, it's a triangular shaped pen. Mm-hmm. The the cap bands. Are metal triangles. Um, In other words, is it machined or is it is it injection is it, molded? As it injection molded. I mean, I have I. I you know what? It, it's it's difficult to say. I mean, with the right machinery, you could certainly do that. If you had a, um, you know, three or four axis mill, that would be easy to do in oh, that yeah. direction. Uh, I, I don't know. Is is do they mass produce many? Because obviously, if you're going to make thousands and thousands and thousands, then it's more cost effective to Limited do to 360. Uh, injection molded plastics. Well, then, I, you know, I wouldn't doubt that it's machine. How do you, you explain know? the I'd very like smooth inside of the entire barrel? That's it's a good point. Um, well, I, I can do okay. it. You it know, can I mean, be done. It's not my, impossible. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the ink windows on my bulb fillers, uh, I, those aren't injection molded. I have to get in there with a tool and clean it out by hand. It's very labor intensive, but it can yeah, be done. But, and a company like thing. Omos, yeah. That's fine. That, that would make you want to charge $750 MSRP for the pen. Right. That, that was my question. That another, the whole question yeah. came up uh, yeah. because of that. To, to me, <laughs> the, since the pen is machine, I mean, it, it makes the price a little more justifiable. So Absolutely. Yeah. I've got Mike on the line. Mike. Mike, can you hear anybody, Mike? Can you hear me? All, all you have to do is hear me, actually. <clears throat> Are you ready to play the Geek Challenge, Mike? I, I, I think I can hear you. Okay, I can hear you. As long as we can hear each other, we'll do fine. True or false, I've got the first one ready here. Are you ready? Mike, are you ready? Okay. True or false, <laughs> the Mont Blanc 149 got its name because it is 149 millimeters in length. I'm sorry, did you say false? Yes, I, I paid attention to Mr. Brown last week. 
<laughs> okay, that is, that is in fact false. I got it wrong a few weeks ago, and we corrected it on the air, and I'm glad you were paying attention. So we can move on to number two. True or false, Rhodia paper is made in Germany. Uh, isn't it made by Castle Ben? I don't know, but you got the accent right. <laughs> False, I say. False. My, I say nay. I assume it's made in France. <laughs> All right, we're two for two. Are we ready for the big third one? Yes, we are. I'll just read it. True or false? Mont Blanc Midnight Blue. I'll try that again. Mont Blanc Midnight Blue Ink is an Iron Gall Ink. Uh, I'm going to say false. You can ask for assistance from the audience if you like. That means true. I don't know that he can hear me. <laughs> well, if he's a good viewer and turned off his stream, he won't be able to hear you. Go ahead and say it. I'll, I'll pick up on it if I hear the right word. True, it is true. Yes, Mont Blanc Midnight Blue oh. is an iron gall ink. Um, interesting. And, yeah, I thought that was extremely interesting, that. too. Guess who told me that? And yes, I have who? verified it. <laughs> Doc Brown, Stephen Brown told me that. Oh, very yeah, cool. Yeah, very cool. So you two talk again, and I'll get Mike off the phone here. So speaking of ink, that's actually going to be the prize. Um, once he gets off the phone with Mike, I'll get a hold of his email address. I'll send him five 10-milliliter, roughly, samples of just, you know, random inks. We got a very sizable donation of ink samples from, from a very nice individual. So uh, we're just going to give them away. Very cool. I liked uh, Mike. Uh, you know, I like his accent. I like uh, his impromptu there. I think he should be your next guest host if you guys are looking for someone. <laughs> he was very good for the radio, you know. It? He was, but you know, we've got a a good selection of, of four rotating hosts at the moment. So, or yeah, yeah, four rotating hosts. Four. All right, am, am I welcome back after all my DC? He comments? did say four. I, that kind I, of includes I you. <laughs> all right, that's all I've got. I think. Um, I did want to mention that next week's show will be on Saturday in at seven no no eight a.m. Pacific right yeah eight a.m. Yes. because it's Mister does Stephen that mean Brown. Stephen Doc Brown's going to be, be on? on the show? Um, yeah. Very good. It's the show. A it's the show the b, directly preceding our trip to the DC Pen Show, and next week on Saturday we'll be giving away that wonderful um, Franklin Kristoff. Model 66 desk pen. Let me just remind everybody how to contact us through email, podcast at fpgeeks.com. You can call us, 415-685-GEEK. We're on Twitter, twitter.com slash fpgeeks. Facebook, facebook.com slash fpgeeks. We have a website, fpgeeks.com, and we have a forum, fpgeeks.com slash forum. You can even send us letters, cookies, whatever you like. Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 499, Highland, California, 92346. It is not in the show outline, I forget, what we usually say at the end of the show. Don't something. Don't spill ink like Dan. That's my and line. And mine was what? Don't don't railroad like no, no, Eric. That's from a different show. <laughs> oh, I think it was sorry. Skip railroad. We don't have that written down, so we'll just have to say. I'll um, say good night and then let you guys say it too. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night everybody. everybody. Hey you guys, thanks thanks for having me again. It's always it, a pleasure. It is fun right? to have you here. It's always, always a blast. Fun. Thanks. All right. Thanks Lots of chemistry going on, right. and don't hang up because we're talking after the show. You've been listening to Eric and Dan on Fountain Pen Radio, a weekly podcast produced by FBGeeks.com. Thanks for listening. But the fun is far from over as the site is constantly buzzing with new content. So until next week, thanks for coming out. Good night.